Hey everyone, today let's talk about RPA, or Robotic Process Automation. In my opinion, the definition lies more in the terms process automation and less in actual robots. But RPA is changing the software world, much like physical robots have changed the world that we live in every day. For example, take a vending machine. There's not a person standing there sorting all your money and vending the goods. It's automated because it's a tedious task. Now, RPA is doing the same thing in the software world for tedious or repetitive tasks. But for things like IT, or even business process management, RPA is not going to help. And that's because these require more specialized skills. So where can RPA assist? Well, let's uh, start with an example inspired by one of my favorite TV shows. Let's say we've got a disgruntled employee. Uh, we're going to call him Pete. Now, Pete has to take a number of documents that uh, are stored you know, digitally and then convert them into uh, forms that he then has to file. So this is a very tedious task. So he has to take all of these forms, write them out manually, and then finally actually go and file them. So this process, let's see, he has to do this you know, 10,000 times. That means you know, Pete's going to be pretty unhappy about this because this is a very tedious, repetitive task. Uh, it's something that, you know, with RPA, he could actually automate. So let's see what Pete would do if he wanted to set up an automation to do this flow. So the first thing he has to do is identify what's the data, where is it coming from. So in this particular example, the data is already in a computer somewhere, and let's say that it's coming in through email, or maybe his coworker Kelly is manually inputting them from, you know, phone calls with customers. So they take the customer forms, they, they put them into the computer. Now, Pete has to extract data, right? So that's going to be the first thing that RPA can help with. You know, so with OCR, or optical character recognition, along with the data that's in the computer, Pete's able to pull out data. And what's, what he's going to do is actually extract that data for further processing. So that data can be things like the customer's name, and the info, let's say in the customer form, it's the complaints that make up that information. So taking that data, so the next thing Pete's going to do is, let's say, validate it. So make sure that none of the data is corrupt and, you know, all of the data looks good. Finally, he has to input it into a digital form. So he puts it into a digital form. And finally, he sends it off to a printer. Now. At this phase, all Pete really has to do is take the final forms that are printed out and then file them. And that's going to be a whole lot easier to do than doing this manually for all 10,000 customer complaint forms that are coming in. So that's where RPA can really assist with tedious, repetitive tasks that require things like clicking through user interfaces, copying and pasting data, or kind of other things like op uh, optical character recognition where you have to extract data. So when choosing an RPA solution, which is going to enable you to do this type of automation, I'd say there's four major things that you really need to be looking for. Now, the first one I'm going to start with, you want to make sure that your RPA tool is intelligent. Now, in this particular flow, Pete used a lot of capabilities. So he used OCR, optical character recognition. In addition, he used different data manipulation techniques. So this enables Pete to do things like extract, input data, validate it. Uh, and finally, he even had a function to be able to print something out, create a physical piece of paper from a software-based automation. That's just scratching the tip of what robot uh, RPA can do today. So another thing RPA can do is things like AI or machine learning to train a model to recognize not just you know, simple characters, but maybe even images. So that's something that Pete might want to augment his automation with in the future. Um, so that's one thing you want to make sure is that your RPA tool is intelligent. Number two, low code. So uh, RPA is really only going to be uh, effective if the users that are creating this automation uh, find that process to be easy. Otherwise, management might choose to actually just have their employees do it manually if creating this type of automation was too time consuming. So a low-code RPA environment is going to enable P to do things like drag and drop components and have minimal touch to actually get this automation created end-to-end. -end. Number three, concurrency. 
So this is going to be the ability to run multiple robots at the same time, multiple automation tasks. So for the 10,000 customer complaint forms, say this task takes 15 seconds, that's a lot of time. So imagine if you could launch multiple robots and divvy up that work. Well, you could get through the task at hand much more quickly. So an RPA solution should have concurrency support. And the last one I want to mention here is RPA as a service. Now, an as-a-service model is going to come with a number of advantages. For one, it's going to give you shorter time to value. And that's because Pete doesn't have to worry about spinning up his own infrastructure, installing the software, managing that environment. He can just log in and start building these automations right away. That brings me to my next point, currency. So not concurrency, but currency, which is keeping up with the latest versions that are available. So RPA and the world of RPA is changing quite rapidly. And so with some of the intelligent capabilities in, in, enabled within RPA, say a new version of OCR comes out and he wants to use it, well, with an RPA as a service capability, you can get updates more quickly. You're more current with the latest versions of software. So you get to use those latest components and maybe OCR 2.0 kind of helps fix some of the bugs with pulling data from customer complaint forms. Finally, I think the last one that I want to mention here is that uh, it allows you to collaborate. So imagine that Pete builds this automation, publishes it, and then now wants to share it with the, the Nashua branch of his company so that they can take advantage of the same process to automate this flow and, and kind of file customer complaint forms. So as a service environments generally are multi-tenant and enable you to collaborate with your coworkers. So this was a quick overview of RPA. RPA tools are quickly growing in popularity, and so is the scope of what RPA is able to actually automate. Now, if you like this video, have any questions or comments, be sure to drop a like or a comment below. As always, stay tuned and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Thank you. RPA is growing very rapidly, and the scope of what RPA is able to automate is also growing rapidly. Now, if you want to see what IBM is doing in the RPA space, be sure to check out the links in the description below.